In the last episode, we trained a custom model on Vertex AI. In this episode, we'll learn how to get batch and online predictions from that trained model. I'm Nikita, and this is Prototype to Production, where we go from notebook code to a deployed model in the cloud. We have a trained model that we save to a cloud storage bucket. But ML is not just about training. What's the point of all of this work if we don't actually use the model to do something, right? So just like with training, we could execute predictions directly from our notebook by calling model.predict. But when we want to get predictions for lots of data or get low latency predictions on the fly, we're going to need something a little more than a notebook. Just imagine if we wanted to process large quantities of the flower images in batches. A notebook probably isn't the best place for this. Or what if we wanted to use our model in an application where users could upload images of flowers and have them identified immediately? When you're ready to use your model to solve a real-world problem with ML, you don't want to be manually executing notebook cells to get a prediction. Instead, you can use the Vertex AI prediction service. So let's see how to use it to get both batch and online predictions. Step one is to get your model into the Vertex AI model registry which is a repository where you can manage the life cycle of your ML models. From the model section in the Google Cloud console, we select the import button. We give our model a name and then we'll select a container. We'll use the pre-built TensorFlow container, but if you're curious how to create custom containers for predictions, check out the resources below. Then we need to specify the path to our saved model artifacts and cloud storage. And then we can click import. This can also be done in the SDK, and you can find the relevant code snippets in the code lab linked below. When the model has been imported, we can see it here in the model registry. You can see that the version ID is one, but if we were to retrain our model, we could maintain multiple versions of the same model. There are two types of prediction jobs we can run in Vertex AI, batch and online. Batch prediction is an asynchronous request. It's a good fit when you don't require an immediate response and you want to process accumulated data in a single request. On the other hand, if you wanted to get low latency predictions from your data passed to your model on the fly, you would use online prediction. You can get batch predictions once you've uploaded your model to the model registry. But to get online predictions, you'll need to take an additional step and deploy the model to an endpoint. This associates the save model artifacts with physical resources for low latency serving. To deploy the model, I'll click this icon on the right and select Deploy to Endpoint. We give the endpoint a name, specify the compute, and then we can click Deploy. Note that there are some other features I skipped over like auto scaling and traffic splitting for when you want to roll out new models, but for simplicity, I'm using all the defaults for now. Again, all of this can be done with the SDK, so definitely check out the code lab below if you prefer writing code to using the UI. When the model is deployed, we can hit it like any other REST endpoint. This means we can call it from a cloud function, a chatbot, a web app, etc. For demonstration purposes, we'll call this endpoint from Workbench. Let's return to our Workbench instance and we can open up a new notebook. I'm also going to upload a flower image to our instance so we can test our model. We'll import the Vertex AI Python SDK, and then we defined our endpoint, specifying the project number and the endpoint ID. You can find your endpoint ID in the endpoint section of the cloud console. And you can find your project number on the home page of the console, but note that this is different from the project ID. When you send a request to the endpoint, the request is received by an HTTP server. The HTTP server extracts the prediction request from the HTTP request content body. The basic format for online prediction is a list of data instances. These can be either plain lists of values or members of a JSON object, depending on how you configured your inputs and your training application. The code below opens the image and converts it into a NumPy array. Then we convert our NumPy data to type float32 and to a list. We do this conversion because NumPy data is not JSON serializable, so we can't send it in the body of our request. 
Note that we don't need to do any pre-processing here because we included scaling and resizing the data as part of our model using Keras pre-processing layers. If your use case does require pre-processing the data, check out the resources on custom prediction routines, which are linked below. Then we call predict. The result you get is the output of the model, which is a softmax layer with five units. If we wanted to get a batch prediction, we can write this data to a JSON file that we store in cloud storage and then make a batch prediction call with the SDK. Now I showed you the simplest way to get a prediction for image data. But for more realistic examples, you'll probably want to send the image itself directly to the endpoint instead of loading it into NumPy first. This will be a lot more efficient, but it does require a little extra work when configuring your TensorFlow model. If you'd like to see an example, check out the notebook link below and drop a note in the comments if you want to learn more or see a video on just that. We started with notebook code, and we now have a deployed model in the cloud. Try this out for yourself by checking out the code lab below and stay tuned for the next episode where we'll talk about some more advanced topics in model training, like hyperparameter tuning and distributed training. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content, and I'll see you next time.